My name is Jake Krongard, and over the next few days, I will be traveling across South Florida to find and capture three of the most incredible non-native species that have been introduced here. By immersing myself in their environment and observing these species up close, I will be able to determine what is ethically correct when dealing with these non-natives. Not only will we learn about the species themselves, but we will decide what moral outlook we should have on these magnificent alien creatures. Right now I'm on my way to the west coast of Florida. We're gonna go road cruising in some rural areas and shine the light in the trees and hopefully find some beautiful chameleons. So let's get out there. Veiled chameleons are an incredible species for a variety of reasons. They are best known for their ability to change colors and camouflage to their surroundings. In addition to their beautiful patterns, they have eyes that move independently from each other, which helps them look for both predators and prey. They also have an extendable tongue that can shoot out and catch insects. Wow. Incredible. This is my favorite one of the night. What a great way to end it. So these are the veiled chameleons, native to Saudi Arabia. Found their way to Florida. On the on my right is a male. You can tell by the more pronounced crown. On the left is female. Whew. These things can grow up to two feet long. These ones are a little smaller. The males get a lot bigger than the females. The males also get a much brighter coloration the older they get. These things are not happy to be in my hands right now. But you don't really understand how cool these things are until you really hold them and let them crawl on you. But I'm done playing with these ones. I'm going to get them back and go look for some more species. Look at that thing. Tonight we're going to venture out into the Everglades and look for the Cuban tree frog. Unfortunately, unlike the chameleon, these guys are actually considered invasive because studies have been done on their ecological impacts as they eat amphibians and native lizards and whatnot. So as cool as these guys are, unfortunately, they're not uh, wanted species down here. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with the chameleons. We're going to shine lights in the trees, except we're not going to be around any houses at all. We're going to be out in the middle of the Everglades. These guys are one of three invasive species of amphibian down here. The other two being the greenhouse frog and the cane toad, which most people know of down here. But these guys are a little bit more of an unknown species and they're extremely cool. So hope we can go find some. Cuban tree frogs are highly adaptable as they can live in aquatic environments as well as high up in trees. Their ability to jump very far distances, their specialized adhesive toe pads, and their distinctive vocalizations at night make them a truly spectacular species. With that being said, they are the largest and most aggressive tree frog in Florida, which can cause problems for other species, especially native frogs and lizards. Currently headed north to Broward County, trying to get on some snakeheads. We got really bad conditions, really high winds, sunny skies, but we're see what we can do. Let's get to it. Well, I didn't get it on video, but there it is. Big old snake. You just want to get back into the water. That's what they do. <laughs> well, it's been a grind all day. Finally, got the snake out. Thank you. 
these things can stay out of the water for hours at a time if they stay wet. But we're gonna get we're gonna get this guy back, even though he's not native. I like them too much. The bullseye snakehead, native to Thailand, is one of the most unique species of fish on the planet. It can grow up to almost four feet long and is an opportunistic ambush predator, eating anything it can fit in its mouth. This fish can spawn up to five times a year and produces tens of thousands of young. They guard these babies with their lives until they are large enough to leave the nest. This fish also breathes air and can live out of water for over a day. In its native range, it is a delicacy, and locals say its meat has special healing powers. Now that I've gone out there and seen these species for myself and done research on them, I have come to the conclusion that in order to ethically decide how to feel about a non-native species, you have to look at their presence from multiple different angles. What is the species? What is it doing? Where is it living? What is it feeding on? What is feeding on it? Is it affecting humans? How many are there? Etc. Etc. It is important to look into the studies that have been done on their impacts and to also go and see for yourself the environments they live in to be able to obtain a correct ethical attitude. If the habitat has already been so drastically transformed by humans, why would it matter if there was a non-harmful, non-native species there? For example, why would you kill a chameleon that is living in a tree in someone's backyard, or kill a snakehead that is living in a man-made suburb and canal? On the other hand, if you have a situation such as Cuban tree frogs in the middle of the unspoiled Everglades, then it is more acceptable to have a negative view towards them. If the species is actually declared invasive, then actions should be taken against them in order to keep the ecosystem healthy. But for the non-native species that have not had any confirmed ecological impact, there is no reason to senselessly kill or take them, which has been a problem with many non-natives in South Florida. With all these non-native species in Florida, you have to remember that none of them are here because of natural causes. They are here because humans introduced them. And with all the vast changes that we have made to the land and waters here, you almost have to give these species credit for being able to adapt and thrive. Yes, it may be at the cost of native species, but the reality is, it is our fault that Florida's habitat and food chains have been so drastically altered. Since all these species have learned to live with us, maybe we should just learn to live with them.